Gregorian Calendar, Wikipedia Audio The Gregorian Calendar is internationally the most widely used civil calendar. It is named after Pope Gregory XIII, who introduced it in October 1582. It was a refinement to the Julian calendar involving an approximately 0.002% correction in the length of the calendar year. The motivation for the reform was to stop the drift of the calendar with respect to the equinoxes and solstices particularly the northern vernal equinox, which helps set the date for Easter. Transition to the Gregorian calendar would restore the holiday to the time of the year in which it was celebrated when introduced by the early Church. The reform was adopted initially by the Catholic countries of Europe. Protestants and Eastern Orthodox countries continued to use the traditional Julian calendar and adopted the Gregorian reform, one by one, after a time at least for civil purposes and for the sake of convenience in international trade. The last European country to adopt the reform was Greece, in 1923. Many countries that have traditionally used the Julian calendar, or the Islamic or other religious calendars, have come to adopt the Gregorian calendar for civil purposes. The Gregorian reform contained two parts, a reform of the Julian calendar as used prior to Pope Gregory XIII's time, and a reform of the lunar cycle used by the Church with the Julian calendar to calculate the date of Easter. The reform was a modification of a proposal made by Aloysius Lilius, who proposed to reduce the number of leap years that occur in every four centuries from 100 to 97, by making three out of four centurial years common years instead of leap years. Lilius also produced an original and practical scheme for adjusting the epax of the moon when calculating the annual date of Easter, solving a long-standing obstacle to calendar reform. Description the Gregorian reform modified the Julian calendar's scheme of leap years as follows. Every year that is exactly divisible by four is a leap year, except for years that are exactly divisible by 100, but these centurial years are leap years if they are exactly divisible by 400. For example, the years 1700, 1800 and 1900 are not leap years, but the year 2000 is. January from Latin Cisinurius, month of Janus, the Roman god of gates, doorways, beginnings, and endings, February, from Latin Cisfebrurius, month of the Februa, the Roman festival of purgation and purification, cognate with fever, the Etruscan death god Februus, and the Pi word for sulfur, March, from Latin Cismertius, month of Mars, the Roman war god, April, from Latin cis Aprilis, of uncertain meaning but usually derived from some form of the verb apariar or the name. Of the goddess Aphrodite, May, from Latin cis Maius, month of Maya, a Roman vegetation goddess whose name is cognate with Latin Magnus and English Major, June, from Latin cis Ineus, month of Juno the Roman goddess of marriage, childbirth, and rule, July, from Latin Sicilius, month of Julius Caesar, the month of Caesar's birth, instituted in 44 BC as part of his calendrical reforms, August, from Latin Cis Augustus, month of Augustus, instituted by Augustus in 8 BC in agreement with July and from the occurrence during the month of several important events during his rise to power, September, from Latin Cis September, 7th month, from its position in the Roman calendar before 153 BC, October, from Latin Cis October, 8th month, from its position in the Roman calendar before 153 BC, November, from Latin Cis November, 9th month, 
from its position in the Roman calendar before 153 BC, December, from Latin Zis. December, 10th month, from its position in the Roman calendar before 153 BC. In addition to the change in the mean length of the calendar year from 365.25 days to 365.2425 days, a reduction of 10 minutes 48 seconds per year, the Gregorian calendar reform also dealt with the accumulated difference between these lengths. The canonical Easter tables were devised at the end of the 3rd century, when the vernal equinox fell either on March 20 or March 21 depending on the year's position in the leap year cycle. As the rule was that the full moon preceding Easter was not to precede the equinox, the date was fixed at March 21 for computational purposes and the earliest date for Easter was fixed at March 22. The Gregorian calendar reproduced these conditions by removing 10 days. To unambiguously specify a date, dual dating or old style and new style dates are sometimes used. Dual dating gives two consecutive years for a given date because of differences in the starting date of the year or to give both the Julian and the Gregorian dates. The old style and new style notations indicate either that the start of the Julian year has been adjusted to start on January 1st or that a date conforms to the Julian calendar rather than the Gregorian. The Gregorian calendar continued to use the previous calendar era, which counts years from the traditional date of the Nativity, originally calculated in the 6th century by Dionysius Exegius. This year-numbering system, also known as Dionysian era or Common Era, is the predominant international standard today. Christopher Clavius, one of the main authors of the reform. Pope Gregory XIII in an early 17th century engraving. Holocene calendar, international fixed calendar, world calendar, world season calendar, leap week calendars, Pax calendar, symmetry 454, Hanka Henry permanent calendar. The Gregorian calendar is a solar calendar. A regular Gregorian year consists of 365 days, but as in the Julian calendar, in certain years, a leap year, a leap day is added to February. In the Julian calendar a leap year occurs every four years, but the Gregorian calendar omits a leap day in three of every 400 years. In the Julian calendar, the leap day was inserted by doubling February 24, and the Gregorian reform did not change the date of the leap day. In the modern period, it has become customary to number the days from the beginning of the month, and February 29 is typically considered as the leap day. Before the 1969 revision of the Roman calendar, the Roman Catholic Church delayed February feasts after the 23rd by one day in leap years, masses celebrated according to the previous calendar still reflect this delay. Gregorian years are identified by consecutive year numbers. The cycles repeat completely every 146,097 days, which equals 400 years. Of these 400 years, 303 are regular years of 365 days and 97 are leap years of 366 days. A mean calendar year is 365.97-400 days equals 365.2425 days, or 365 days, 5 hours, 49 minutes, and 12 seconds. Johannes de Sacro Bosco, de Annie Rationi, c. 1235, Roger Bacon, Opus Magus, c. 1267. Gregorian Reform 
A calendar date is fully specified by the year, the month, and the day of the month. Although the calendar year currently runs from January 1st to December 31st, at previous times year numbers were based on a different starting point within the calendar. The Gregorian calendar was a reform of the Julian calendar. It was instituted in 1582 by Pope Gregory XIII, after whom the calendar was named, by papal bull in Gravis Simas dated February 24, 1582. The motivation for the adjustment was to bring the date for the celebration of Easter to the time of year in which it was celebrated when it was introduced by the early Church. The error in the Julian calendar had led to the date of the equinox according to the calendar drifting from the observed reality, and thus an error had been introduced into the calculation of the date of Easter. Although a recommendation of the First Council of Nicaea in 325 specified that all Christians should celebrate Easter on the same day, it took almost five centuries before virtually all Christians achieved that objective by adopting the rules of the Church of Alexandria. Because the date of Easter was tied to the spring equinox, the Roman Catholic Church considered the seasonal drift in the date of Easter undesirable. The Church of Alexandria celebrated Easter on the Sunday after the fourteenth day of the moon that falls on or after the vernal equinox, which they placed on March 21. However, the Church of Rome still regarded March 25 as the equinox, and used a different cycle to compute the day of the moon. In the Alexandrian system, since the 14th day of the Easter moon could fall at earliest on March 21st its first day could fall no earlier than March 8th and no later than April 5th. This meant that Easter varied between March 22nd and April 25th. In Rome, Easter was not allowed to fall later than April 21st, that being the day of the Paralia or birthday of Rome and a pagan festival. The first day of the Easter moon could fall no earlier than March 5 and no later than April 2. Easter was the Sunday after the 15th day of this moon, whose 14th day was allowed to precede the equinox. Where the two systems produced different dates there was generally a compromise so that both churches were able to celebrate on the same day. By the 10th century all churches had adopted the Alexandrian Easter, which still placed the vernal equinox on March 21, although Bede had already noted its drift in 725 it had drifted even further by the 16th century. Worse, the reckoned moon that was used to compute Easter was fixed to the Julian year by a 19-year cycle. That approximation built up an error of one day every 310 years, so by the 16th century the lunar calendar was out of phase with the real moon by four days. European scholars had been well aware of the calendar drift since the early medieval period. Bede, writing in the 8th century, showed that the accumulated error in his day was more than three days. Roger Bacon in C. 1200 estimated the error at seven or eight days. Dante, writing C. 1300, was aware of the need of a calendar reform. The first attempt to go forward with such a reform was undertaken by Pope Sixtus IV, who in 1475 invited Reggio Montanus to the Vatican for this purpose. However, the project was interrupted by the death of Reggio Montanus shortly after his arrival in Rome. The increase of astronomical knowledge and the precision of observations towards the end of the 15th century made the question more pressing. Numerous publications over the following decades called for a calendar reform, among them a paper sent to the Vatican by the University of Salamanca in 1515 but the project was not taken up again until the 1540s, and implemented only under Pope Gregory XIII. 
In 1545, the Council of Trent authorized Pope Paul III to reform the calendar, requiring that the date of the vernal equinox be restored to that which it held at the time of the First Council of Nicaea in 325 and that an alteration to the calendar be designed to prevent future drift. This would allow for a more consistent and accurate scheduling of the Feast of Easter. Background Preparation In 1577, a compendium was sent to expert mathematicians outside the Reform Commission for comments. Some of these experts, including Giambattista Benedetti and Giuseppe Molito, believed Easter should be computed from the true motions of the sun and moon, rather than using a tabular method, but these recommendations were not adopted. The reform adopted was a modification of a proposal made by the Calabrian Dr. Aloysius Lilius. Adoption Difference between Gregorian and Julian calendar dates Beginning of the year Dual dating Old style and new style dates Lilius's proposal included reducing the number of leap years in four centuries from 100 to 97, by making three out of four centurial years common instead of leap years. He also produced an original and practical scheme for adjusting the epochs of the moon when calculating the annual date of Easter, solving a long-standing obstacle to calendar reform. Ancient tables provided the sun's mean longitude. Christopher Clavius, the architect of the Gregorian calendar, noted that the tables agreed neither on the time when the sun passed through the vernal equinox nor on the length of the mean tropical year. Tycho Ubra also noticed discrepancies. The Gregorian leap year rule was put forward by Petrus Pittatus of Verona in 1560. He noted that it is consistent with the tropical year of the Alphonsine tables and with the mean tropical year of Copernicus and Reinhold. The three mean tropical years in Babylonian sexagesimals as the excess over 365 days were 1433, 57, 1433, 11, and 1433,9,24. All values are the same to two places and this is also the mean length of the Gregorian year. Thus Pittatus' solution would have commended itself to the astronomers. Lilius's proposals had two components. Firstly, he proposed a correction to the length of the year. The mean tropical year is 365.24219 days long. As the average length of a Julian year is 365.25 days, the Julian year is almost 11 minutes longer than the mean tropical year. The discrepancy results in a drift of about 3 days every 400 years. Lilius's proposal resulted in an average year of 365.2425 days. At the time of Gregory's reform there had already been a drift of 10 days since the Council of Nicaea, resulting in the vernal equinox falling on 10 or March 11 instead of the ecclesiastically fixed date of March 21, and if unreformed it would drift further. Lilius proposed that the 10-day drift should be corrected by deleting the Julian leap day on each of its 10 occurrences over a period of 40 years thereby providing for a gradual return of the equinox to March 21. Proleptic Gregorian Calendar Lilius's work was expanded upon by Christopher Clavius in a closely argued, 800-page volume. He would later defend his and Lilius's work against detractors. Clavius's opinion was that the correction should take place in one move, and it was this advice which prevailed with Gregory. The second component consisted of an approximation which would provide an accurate yet simple, rule-based calendar. 
Lilius's formula was a ten-day correction to revert the drift since the Council of Nicaea, and the imposition of a leap day in only 97 years in 400 rather than in one year in four. The proposed rule was that years divisible by 100 would be leap years only if they were divisible by 400, as well. The 19-year cycle used for the lunar calendar was also to be corrected by one day every 300 or 400 years along with corrections for the years that are no longer leap years. In fact, a new method for computing the date of Easter was introduced. When the new calendar was put in use, the error accumulated in the 13 centuries since the Council of Nicaea was corrected by a deletion of 10 days. The Julian calendar day Thursday, October 4, 1582 was followed by the first day of the Gregorian calendar, Friday, October 15, 1582. Although Gregory's reform was enacted in the most solemn of forms available to the Church, the bull had no authority beyond the Catholic Church and the Papal States. The changes that he was proposing were changes to the civil calendar, over which he had no authority. They required adoption by the civil authorities in each country to have legal effect. The bull inter gravis simas became the law of the Catholic Church in 1582, but it was not recognized by Protestant churches, Eastern Orthodox churches, Oriental Orthodox churches, and a few others. Consequently, the days on which Easter and related holidays were celebrated by different Christian churches again diverged. A month after having decreed the reform, the Pope with a brief of April 3, 1582 granted to Antonio Lilio, the brother of Luigi Lilio, the exclusive right to publish the calendar for a period of ten years. The Lunario Novo Secondo La Nuova Reforma printed by Vincenzo Occulti, one of the first calendars printed in Rome after the reform, notes at the bottom that it was signed with papal authorization and by Lilio Lillage. The papal brief was later revoked, on September 20, 1582, because Antonio Lilio proved unable to keep up with the demand for copies. Months On September 29, 1582, Philip II of Spain decreed the change from the Julian to the Gregorian calendar. This affected much of Roman Catholic Europe as Philip was at the time ruler over Spain and Portugal as well as much of Italy. In these territories, as well as in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and in the Papal States, the new calendar was implemented on the date specified by the bull, with Julian Thursday, October 4, 1582, being followed by Gregorian Friday, October 15, 1582. The Spanish and Portuguese colonies followed somewhat later de facto because of delay in communication. Many Protestant countries initially objected to adopting a Catholic innovation, some Protestants feared the new calendar was part of a plot to return them to the Catholic fold. For example, the British could not bring themselves to adopt the Catholic system explicitly, the annex to their calendar Act 1750 established a computation for the date of Easter that achieved the same result as Gregory's rules, without actually referring to him. Weeks Britain and the British Empire adopted the Gregorian calendar in 1752. Sweden followed in 1753. Prior to 1917, Turkey used the lunar Islamic calendar with the Hijra era for general purposes and the Julian calendar for fiscal purposes. The start of the fiscal year was eventually fixed at March 1 and the year number was roughly equivalent to the Hijra year. As the solar year is longer than the lunar year this originally entailed the use of escape years every so often when the number of the fiscal year would jump. 
From March 1, 1917 the fiscal year became Gregorian, rather than Julian. On January 1, 1926 the use of the Gregorian calendar was extended to include use for general purposes and the number of the year became the same as in most other countries. Accuracy Calendar seasonal error Proposed reforms 1582, Spain, Portugal, France, Poland, Italy, Catholic Low Countries, Luxembourg and Colonies, 1584, Kingdom of Bohemia. 1610, Prussia, 1648, Alsace, 1682, Strasbourg. 1700, Germany, Swiss Cantons, Protestant Low Countries, Norway, Denmark, 1752, Great Britain and Colonies, 1753, Sweden and Finland. 1873, Japan, 1875, Egypt, 1896, Korea. 1912, China, Albania, 1915, Latvia, Lithuania. 1916, Bulgaria, 1918, USSR, Estonia, 1919, Romania, Yugoslavia, 1923, Greece, 1926, Turkey. Since the introduction of the Gregorian calendar, the difference between Gregorian and Julian calendar dates has increased by three days every four centuries. This section always places the intercalary day on February 29th even though it was always obtained by doubling February 24th or Basek style day until the late Middle Ages. The Gregorian calendar is proleptic before 1582. The following equation gives the number of days that the Gregorian calendar is ahead of the Julian calendar, called the secular difference between the two calendars. A negative difference means the Julian calendar is ahead of the Gregorian calendar. Where D is the secular difference and Y is the year using astronomical year numbering, that is, use 1 for BC years, X, backslash right backslash refloor, means that if the result of the division is not an integer it is rounded down to the nearest integer. Thus during the 1900s, 1900 slash 400 equals 4, while during the 500 s, 500 slash 400 equals 2. The general rule, in years which are leap years in the Julian calendar but not the Gregorian, is as follows. Up to February 28th in the calendar you are converting from add one day less or subtract one day more than the calculated value. Remember to give February the appropriate number of days for the calendar you are converting into. When you are subtracting days to move from Julian to Gregorian be careful, when calculating the Gregorian equivalent of February 29th, to remember that February 29th is discounted. Thus if the calculated value is for the Gregorian equivalent of this date is February 24th. The year used in dates during the Roman Republic and the Roman Empire was the consular year which began on the day when consuls first entered office probably May 1st before 222 BC, March 15th from 222 BC and January 1st from 153 BC. The Julian calendar, which began in 45 BC, continued to use January 1st as the first day of the new year. Even though the year used for dates changed, the civil year always displayed its months in the order January to December from the Roman Republican period until the present. During the Middle Ages, under the influence of the Catholic Church, 
many Western European countries moved the start of the year to one of several important Christian festivals 25 December 25th March, or Easter, while the Byzantine Empire began its year on September 1st and Russia did so on March 1st until 1492 when the new year was moved to September 1st. In common usage, January 1st was regarded as New Year's Day and celebrated as such, but from the 12th century until 1751 the legal year in England began on March 25th. So, for example, the parliamentary record lists the execution of Charles I on January 30th as occurring in 1648 although later histories adjust the start of the year to January 1st and record the execution as occurring in 1649. Most Western European countries changed the start of the year to January 1st before they adopted the Gregorian calendar. For example, Scotland changed the start of the Scottish New Year to January 1st in 1600. England, Ireland and the British colonies changed the start of the year to January 1st in 1752 though in England the start of the tax year remained at March 25th, April 5th till 1800, when it moved to April 6th. Later in 1752 in September the Gregorian calendar was introduced throughout Britain and the British colonies. These two reforms were implemented by the Calendar Act 1750. In some countries, an official decree or law specified that the start of the year should be January 1st. For such countries a specific year when a 1 January year became the norm can be identified. In other countries the customs varied and the start of the year moved back and forth as fashion and influence from other countries dictated various customs. Neither the papal bull nor its attached canons explicitly fix such a date, though it is implied by two tables of St. S. Days, one labeled 1582 which ends on December 31st, and another for any full year that begins on January 1st. It also specifies its e-pact relative to January 1st, in contrast with the Julian calendar, which specified it relative to March 22nd. The old date was derived from the Greek system, the earlier Supputatio Romana specified it relative to January 1st. During the period between 1582, when the first countries adopted the Gregorian calendar, and 1923, when the last European country adopted it, it was often necessary to indicate the date of some event in both the Julian calendar and in the Gregorian calendar, for example, 1021 February 1750-51, where the dual year accounts for some countries already beginning their numbered year on January 1st while others were still using some other date. Even before 1582, the year sometimes had to be double dated because of the different beginnings of the year in various countries. Woolley, writing in his biography of John D., notes that immediately after 1582 English letter writers customarily used two dates on their letters, one OS and one NS. Old style and new style are sometimes added to dates to identify which calendar reference system is used for the date given. In Britain and its colonies, where the Calendar Act of 1750 altered the start of the year, and also aligned the British calendar with the Gregorian calendar, there is some confusion as to what these terms mean. They can indicate that the start of the Julian year has been adjusted to start on January 1st even though contemporary documents use a different start of year, or to indicate that a date conforms to the Julian calendar, formerly in use in many countries, rather than the Gregorian calendar. 
extending the Gregorian calendar backwards to dates preceding its official introduction produces a proleptic calendar, which should be used with some caution. For ordinary purposes, the dates of events occurring prior to October 15, 1582 are generally shown as they appeared in the Julian calendar, with the year starting on January 1, and no conversion to their Gregorian equivalents. For example, the Battle of Agincourt is universally considered to have been fought on October 25, 1415 which is St. Crispin's Day. Usually, the mapping of new dates onto old dates with a start of year adjustment works well with little confusion for events that happened before the introduction of the Gregorian calendar. But for the period between the first introduction of the Gregorian calendar on October 15, 1582 and its introduction in Britain on September 14, 1752, there can be considerable confusion between events in continental Western Europe and in British domains in English language histories. Events in continental Western Europe are usually reported in English language histories as happening under the Gregorian calendar. For example, the Battle of Blenheim is always given as August 13, 1704. Confusion occurs when an event affects both. For example, William III of England arrived at Brixham in England on November 5, 1688, after setting sail from the Netherlands on November 11, 1688. Shakespeare and Cervantes seemingly died on exactly the same date, but Cervantes predeceased Shakespeare by ten days in real time. This coincidence encouraged UNESCO to make April 23 the World Book and Copyright Day. Astronomers avoid this ambiguity by the use of the Julian Day number. Four dates before the year 1, unlike the proleptic Gregorian calendar used in the International Standard ISO 8601, the traditional proleptic Gregorian calendar does not have a year zero and instead uses the ordinal numbers 1, 2, both for years AD and BC. Thus the traditional timeline is 2 BC, 1 BC, AD 1, and AD 2. ISO 8601 uses astronomical year numbering which includes a year zero and negative numbers before it. Thus the ISO 8601 timeline is 0001-0000-0001 and 0002. The Gregorian calendar continued to employ the Julian months, which have Latinate names and irregular numbers of days. Europeans sometimes attempt to remember the number of days in each month by memorizing some form of the traditional verse 30 days hath September. It appears in Latin, Italian, and French, and belongs to a broad oral tradition but the earliest currently attested form of the poem is the English marginalia inserted into a calendar of Saints C. 1425. Thirty days hath November, April, June and September, of the siege is but one, and Allah the remnant triple X and J. Thirty days have November, April, June and September, of twenty-eight is but one, and all the remnant thirty and one. Variations appeared in Mother Goose and continue to be taught at schools. The unhelpfulness of such involved mnemonics has been parroted as 30 days hath September slash but all the rest I can't remember but it has also been called probably the only 16th century poem most ordinary citizens know by heart. A common nonverbal alternative is the knuckle mnemonic, considering the knuckles of one's hands as months with 31 days and the lower spaces between them as the months with fewer days. Using two hands, one may start from either pinky knuckle as January and count across, omitting the space between the index knuckles. The same procedure can be done using the knuckles of a single hand, 
returning from the last to the first and continuing through. A similar mnemonic is to move up a piano keyboard in semitones from an F key, taking the white keys as the longer months and the black keys as the shorter ones. In conjunction with the system of months there is a system of weeks. A physical or electronic calendar provides conversion from a given date to the weekday, and shows multiple dates for a given weekday and month. Calculating the day of the week is not very simple, because of the irregularities in the Gregorian system. When the Gregorian calendar was adopted by each country, the weekly cycle continued uninterrupted. For example, in the case of the few countries that adopted the reformed calendar on the date proposed by Gregory XIII for the calendar's adoption, Friday, October 15, 1582, the preceding date was Thursday, October 4, 1582. Opinions vary about the numbering of the days of the week. ISO 8601, in common use worldwide, starts with Monday equals 1, printed monthly calendar grids often list Mondays in the first column of dates and Sundays in the last. Software often starts with Sunday equals 0, which places Sundays in the left column of a monthly calendar page. The Gregorian calendar improves the approximation made by the Julian calendar by skipping three Julian leap days in every 400 years, giving an average year of 365.2425 mean solar days long. This approximation has an error of about one day per 3,030 years with respect to the current value of the mean tropical year. However, because of the precession of the equinoxes, which is not constant, and the movement of the perihelion the error with respect to the astronomical vernal equinox is variable, using the average interval between vernal equinoxes near 2000 of 365.24237 days implies an error closer to one day every 7700 years. By any criterion, the Gregorian calendar is substantially more accurate than the one day in 128 years error of the Julian calendar. In the 19th century, Sir John Herschel proposed a modification to the Gregorian calendar with 969 leap days every 4,000 years, instead of 970 leap days that the Gregorian calendar would insert over the same period. This would reduce the average year to 365.24225 days. Herschel's proposal would make the year 4000, and multiples thereof, common instead of leap. While this modification has often been proposed since, it has never been officially adopted. On time scales of thousands of years, the Gregorian calendar falls behind the astronomical seasons because the slowing down of the Earth's rotation makes each day slightly longer over time while the year maintains a more uniform duration. This image shows the difference between the Gregorian calendar and the astronomical seasons. The y-axis is the date in June and the x-axis is Gregorian calendar years. Each point is the date and time of the June solstice in that particular year. The error shifts by about a quarter of a day per year. Centurial years are ordinary years, unless they are divisible by 400, in which case they are leap years. This causes a correction in the years 1700, 1800, 1900, 2100, 2200, and 2300. For instance, these corrections cause December 23, 1903 to be the latest December solstice, and December 20, 2096 to be the earliest solstice about 2.35 days of variation compared with the seasonal event. The following are proposed reforms of the Gregorian calendar. Precursors of the Gregorian reform 
Notes Citations